With the new split at hand, it's good to know what weapons are currently most effective and which ones, well, are not. So today, I've got a tier list to help you decide which guns you should be putting more effort into, improving on, and using more frequently. I try my best to be objective here, and a lot of this list will be based on stats, ease of use, ammo and attachment economy, and general consistency. But of course, I will throw a little bit of info based on my own experiences as well. Now look guys, I know you want to improve faster at Apex Legends, but you can't do that unless you click the link in the description below to get a very limited time 50% discount that we're only offering now because of the launch of the second split. You'll get access to literally hundreds of courses, guides, breakdowns, and more videos made by top level coaches to help you improve and reach your goals. So make sure to use code RANK50 to get your discount and to join Game Leap now before it's too late. First up, starting at the very bottom of D tier, we got the EVA 8. Unfortunately, this gun got nerfed pretty hard and there's no question about it. This is the worst gun in Apex Legends, hands down. It's simply not worth you picking up anymore unless you have nothing else. And I would much rather take something like the Mozambique, which has way more range and damage output. Next, we have the L-Star, once a gun that ran rampant in arenas and has been nerfed for a while now. With that nerf, it's damage output, and now it got another nerf to its headshot multiplier this previous season, and that really just makes this gun live up to its name because it is an L. While they did make it easier to see while shooting it since you're no longer creating ray festivals while shooting it, it still just has a very low damage output as well as a gimmicky mechanic that requires you to sometimes pace your shots. So with that said, it's definitely on the D tier, especially considering some of the other LMG options that are higher up on the list. Next up, we have the C tier, and starting off, we have the RE45 and the P2020, which both seem to suffer from the same problem. They can work well off the rip, especially if you get hammer points, but you're crazy if you were taking this over any of the SMGs. Yes, these pistols give you no stray speed penalty and can be very easy to use, but you only get a decent damage output when using the hammer points, and they have to have no armor to get that damage. And even then, the DPS for the P2020 is less than the car or the R99, and the RE45 is right in between the R99 and the car, but again, they have to have no armor, so why not just have that damage output from the very start? As far as the movement speed goes, when using an SMG in close quarters, you probably shouldn't be ADSing the entire time anyways. Alternating between ADS, hip firing, and crouch makes you unpredictable, harder to hit, while also keeping the accuracy. So that argument doesn't really apply here either. I'm sorry, not sorry. I can see why people like these guns since they're pretty easy to use, but you could get the same ease of use from the alternator with the benefit of having a higher damage per magazine and consistent damage output regardless of the enemy having armor or not. I will say though, out of all the hammer point guns, the Mozam is by far the best. The range is pretty crazy all things considered, damage is the same as the wingman for body shots but with the faster fire rate, and even more damage when they have no armor, and even though it's a shotgun, it still gets no ADS movement speed penalty as if it were a pistol. However, where it falls off is its very low ammo count of only 6, it's super low damage per magazine, very slow reload, and to top it off, it's not the easiest weapon to use for a majority of the player base. Plus, it shoots pellets, so it isn't the most consistent thing in the world either. You're gonna hear the word consistent a lot through this whole list. I'm just preparing you for that now. Again, just like with the other hammer point weapons, generally you will be better off just taking any of the full auto SMGs because you'll have more consistent and reliable performance as a whole. And of course, you'd be better off taking the Peacekeeper, but that's only if you hit your shots. Now, to round off our C tier, we have the Triple Take. With the recent nerfs to this marksman weapon, combined with the fact that you have to charge the shots to get something consistent going, makes this gun very underwhelming. I will say, at the start of the game, it can be great, but as the game goes on, it really starts to fall off because there's just so many more options that will help you to land consistent shots at long range. I told you, I'm going to be saying consistent a lot because that's what we want, baby. Consistency. Now, to start off our B tier, we have the burst weapons of the game. On paper, the Prowler has a few things going for it, like it's high damage per magazine and comparable TTK on targets with blue armor and purple armor, but it actually has quite a bit worse TTK than other SMGs on targets with white and red armor. But the problem with both the Prowler and the Hemlock is that it just lacks consistency. This is the reason the Prowler has been preferred on controller as it helps with that very issue. But Apex is a game known for its movement and movement makes it much harder to hit all of your shots with burst guns. Not only that, but these guns simply lack versatility. It is 1000 times easier to alternate between ADS and hip fire while still landing your shots with the flatline than it is with the hemlock, even though the hemlock's hip fire is pretty good. Plus, other full auto weapons tend to just work pretty well at all ranges and help to bring consistency to the many variables that come with Apex. It puts 
puts control in your hands, unlike Respawn, over the variables that can cost you games. While the Prowler seems to generally really only be most effective at close range and somewhat out to mid range, and the Hemlock pretty much just at mid range, and due to the nature of the game with its longer time to kill, burst weapons will tend to fall behind and suffer from the same problems that semi-auto snipers do, waiting to be able to shoot the next bullet or burst only for the enemy to run behind cover before you can kill them, which leads us to our next weapon on the B tier, the Longbow. Honestly, it's pretty rare that you see people using the semi-auto sniper anyway these days, and this gun feels far more like a clunky marksman rifle than it does a sniper. The fire rate is slower, the movement and handling is slower than a marksman, but the damage is slightly higher than something like the 3030, or is it? One of the benefits of semi-autos compared to the bolt action is that it makes follow-up shots pretty easy, but if we take that into consideration, the 3030 actually does more damage overall with a DPS of 98 due to its higher fire rate. Comparing that to the lower DPS of the longbow, which is 71.5 damage per second, the longbow damage is pretty underwhelming all things considered. In fact, on a purple armored target, it takes the same amount of shots to the body to kill with the 3030, which is four. And in all other cases, the 3030 only takes one more shot to kill, which it makes up for with every other stat, fire rate, handling, etc. And on top of all that, the stability of the longbow is terrible. Even with the barrel stabilizer, it still has a higher recoil and takes longer to reset after each shot, making those follow-up shots more difficult. And all that said, overall, I think there are just better options when it comes to long range weapons nowadays. An example, would be the Sentinel, which is next on our list. The Sentinel is a very fun gun to use since it's the only bolt action besides the Kraber. It can dish out some massive damage and really put pressure on enemies, which is why it's a little higher on this tier list than the Longbow, though not by much. It has less bullet drop and higher velocity, so it's easier to use, and really the downfall that it has is the fact that it's bolt action, but its raw burst potential, easier handling, and more importantly, its ability to create openings makes up for it. With these two guns, it will really come up to personal preference, let's be real, as some people will just perform better with the longbow because that's just their jam, and others will perform better with the sentinel. But as a whole, they definitely are not your best options by any means. However, something that's a bit more effective than those two, surprisingly, would be the Bowcheck Bow. This weapon is crazy because it has an insanely fast velocity, which is weird for a bow, so once you get used to it, it can be really effective at range. It does great damage and has a great fire rate and is just generally good for what it does. But the problem it will always have, unless Respawn makes a change, is that the ammo economy is terrible. Unless you are constantly crafting arrows or using all of your materials on arrows off the rib, then yeah, but honestly, who wants to do that? That makes the bow fall off towards the end game because you won't be able to find ammo in death box easily, when you could just be running an assault rifle when probably just as, if not more, effective. And for that reason, it stays in B tier. Next, we have the Rampage. To be honest, I feel like the Rampage page has really fallen off since its recent nerfs, even though it didn't really change the TTK. The only thing that it has going for it is its charged up state, being able to destroy doors, and it's got an okay DPS while it's charged. Other than that, really, it's just its ability to endlessly fire, albeit very slow. Other than that, its handling is terrible since it's an LMG, and its damage is actually pretty bad unless you have it charged. You really pay the price for missing shots with this thing since it fires so slow, and any other LMG or assault rifle will kill you, no problem. When it's charged, its damage is okay, but carrying around thermites, having to charge it, just messing with it is a pain, and you'd be more consistent overall using a flatline, a Spitfire, or an R301 for that matter. You have to ask yourself, why use a Rampage when I could be using the Spitfire, which is way easier to use, does more DPS on the baseline, is far less punishing if you miss shots, and has just about as much damage per magazine. Yeah, the Rampage can stay in B tier. And finally, to top off B tier, we have the Alternator. As much as I would like to put this in A tier, the problem with the Alternator is, of course, it's really low damage output. But overall, this gun is insanely versatile. Great handling, great pretty much at any range, insanely easy to use, and is probably one of the best guns early game. But its damage just cannot keep up towards the end when everyone has full armor and fully kitted out car SMGs. However, I will say this gun works really well as a mid-range quote-unquote assault rifle because it gives you the ability to easily outstrafe other AR users. Pair it with a PK or a car SMG and you're golden. Honestly though, if they just pumped up the damage just a little bit, I think the alternator would easily be A tier, maybe even S tier depending on how they approach it, but for now, they'll just take the lead in B tier. All right, now onto the A tier. This will probably be a hot take, but I firmly believe that the 3030 is 
mad slept on, and if the wingman ever gets nerfed, this will probably be the next to go. Even Asu agrees with that. It is basically a wingman with more zoom, but slightly less mobility, obviously. But if you have a hard time hitting shots with the wingman, the 3030 can be amazing at long and mid ranges. Also, because it uses heavy ammo, which is very easy to come across, because, you know, all the popular guns are heavy, you won't ever have to worry about ammo issues at all. And the other great thing about the 3030 is its hip fire. At first, it feels off, but it is surprisingly accurate even without the shatter caps. And you'd be surprised how often you can easily get kills at close range just by hip firing. The main problem with the 3030 is that its reload is so terrible, even with the hop up, and that can really hold you back and even cost you kills sometimes. However, some of my best games have been with the 3030, and if you haven't tried it, I highly recommend it if you like to play at mid to long ranges. Next up, we have the Devotion with Turbocharger. This gun obviously suffers from all the problems that come with an LMG. It's slow, clunky, however, it also has the benefit of having the highest full auto DPS in the game. Well, besides Sheila, at least. If you get caught in an ego challenge up close against a Devo, all they have to do is hold the button, hit fire, and you're likely dead if you miss even just a few bullets, because if they hit fire it, they get no movement speed penalty. This is the problem with LMGs. The Devo, like other LMGs, has an insanely high damage per magazine, but it also has a really fast fire rate, making it easy to get kills if you can control it. Really, the one big drawback, besides the fact that it requires a turbocharger and its overall slow handling, is that it takes a massive amount of ammo and will chew through it like nothing, so it is almost a requirement that you run it with something that requires little ammo, like a wingman or a peacekeeper. These issues, unfortunately, keep it on the lower end of A tier, but man, this thing is still pretty insane. Next up, we have the charge rifle. Good old charge rifle Charlie sniping it up. Oh, how much we hate him. This gun is very annoying to deal with sometimes, we all know it, we all hate it, but that doesn't change the fact that it is the only hit scan gun in the game. It's probably the easiest way to level up your teammates' evil shields and is insanely consistent, which can make it oppressive. And on top of that, overall, it's just stupid easy to use. The main problem with it is that the kill potential is rather lacking due to the way it operates and its lack of burst damage, but it works great to slow players in the open from a distance to make it easier for your team to shoot at them. Another issue is that it takes a ton of ammo, and the smaller the circle gets, the less value it will bring because this thing is just terrible at close range, obviously. However, it can always be swapped out later, but the fact that it can hit scan and that it's particularly annoying to go against due to its oppressive nature keeps it in the A tier. Next up, we have the R99. While this gun has an insanely fast fire rate, which can cause a ton of flinch, as well as having really good DPS, unfortunately, it pretty much falls behind the car SMG in every way possible. The problem with the R99 is that it has a really low damage per magazine, so even if you miss a bullet or two, you will feel it, which is easy to do when the gun is firing so fast. But if you learn how to use it, it can be a little bit more effective than the car SMG at longer ranges due to its recoil, so that is one thing that it does have over it. It's still a great gun that feels good to use, but no way is it S tier, not as long as the car is here. Finally, at the top of A tier, we have the Spitfire. Unlike other LMGs, this one has almost no drawbacks. Of course, it has the usual stuff like slow handling and whatnot. However, the fire rate is decent. Its damage per magazine is huge. It's the easiest of all the LMGs to use. It's great on ammo economy and consumption and uses heavy ammo, which you will always find very easily. This gun is so balanced that it's a problem. It definitely needs to be at the very least more difficult to control to keep this thing in line, but overall, you really can't go wrong with picking the Spitfire. I will say that they nerfed the hip fire a bit, so you have to be within eight meters or so to really benefit from it, but this can be offset by alternating between hip fire, ADS, and crouching while strafing, and that will help to keep you mobile while tightening up the spread, meaning you won't lose accuracy as much. And finally, we have our S tier. Starting off with the turbocharged Havoc, this thing is insane. It is very similar to the flatline, but slightly more difficult to control. However, it has a bigger magazine with the damage output, that of the R99, at even long ranges, which is bonkers, by the way. If you can hit your shots and have a turbocharger, this gun is by far the best mid-range gun in the game, and definitely worth running. But if you don't have a turbocharger, well, you're better off with a flatline. Our next gun, however, is of course, the Peacekeeper. The lever action cowboy shoddy is basically a must for bubble fights. Besides the Mastiff, it's obviously the best shotgun in the game. Of course, it's not the easiest thing to use, but that doesn't change the fact that it's 100% a part of the meta and super effective. I feel like there's not much more to say about that one. Next up, we've got the flatline. Don't let the nerf that happened to this gun fool you. While its DPS is just ever so slightly lower now, that being 180 instead of 190, it still claps cheeks easily, baby. High damage per magazine, meaning it's easier to kill multiple targets, versatile and effective at all ranges, relatively easy to use, doesn't require much in regards to the attachments, and on top of all of that, it's got some pretty good hip fire, man. Honestly, you can't go wrong with the flatline, and I even go as far to say that if you can hit your shots, the flatline is better than the R301 because it has more damage per mag as well as it being better in close quarters fights. But if you can't hit your shots, the R301 is probably the play. Now next on the list we have the CAR SMG. I know people love that R99 and some even say the all 
alternator is better, but it is clear that the car is far superior to all SMGs, period. That is not an opinion, it is simply fact. It is better in every single way, in every single stat, except for its damage per magazine, which of course the alternator and prowler have a beat, and of course the Volt, but we're not counting the Volt in this right now because that's a care package weapon. Obviously it's good. But the car only falls short by about 80 damage to the alternator, compared to the R99 falling short about 130, give or take. In the damage per magazine department, it's still pretty good, all things considered. Really, the main thing that people don't like about the car is the recoil, but that is something that can be learned. It is something in your control, not the developer's control, well, at least for now. So there's no reason that you shouldn't be running it, and if you're having a hard time using it, it just means you need a little bit of practice, that's all. I promise it is well worth the time investment. And of course, you knew it was coming, but our next on our list is the Wingman. While it's not the easiest gun to use, it is obviously insanely strong. It's got all the pluses, and there's a reason so many people love to use it. It works as a poke weapon, it works as a mid-range weapon, it works as a shotgun. It has no stray speed penalty, high damage for magazine potential, great handling, booster loader, pop-up is extremely good and easy to find. <sighs> the only real downfall is how difficult the gun can be to use, but it 100% belongs in the S tier because the pros really do outweigh the cons if you're willing to put in the effort to learn how to use it. I mean, there's a reason the pros are complaining about it. And finally, the top of the charts, the cream of the crop, we have the R301. It's got amazing damage, a decent fire rate, and it's insanely easy to use. Emphasis on the insanely. You literally cannot ever go wrong by taking the R301. Even if your aim feels off that day, the R301 is probably going to help with that. The downsides of the R301 is that it has a lower damage per magazine, meaning it's harder to kill multiple players with a single mag, and its hip fire isn't quite as good as the flatline, but it still works pretty well, all things considered. Other than that, this thing is just too easy to use for the amount of damage it outputs and for its overall versatility. Now, of course, we have the care package weapons, but come on, we all know those are god tier. But I will say, the Mastiff is probably the best out of all of them. I hope this video has helped you to choose what gun will work best for you, and I hope it has helped you to pop off and get those dubs in the Outlands. Thank you so much for watching. This has been Johnny, and I'll see you in the next one.